Welcome traveler, today we are doing something different than usual. We'll deep dive into the commander's ban list, and together we'll brainstorm around why those cards are banned and if they should stay locked up there or freed into our tables. This is if, if you are interested, come take a peek into the cauldron. I decided to divide the cards into different categories. The first category of banned cards we're going to talk about are the anti-cards. These are banned for very obvious reasons. When you play Commander, you don't play for anti. It's basically a different format. I don't think anyone in the world still plays anti. But some of these cards are very funny effects, and I want to go over some of this. First up is Jeweled Bird. Basically, you, when you use this artifact that costs only 1 mana, you can uh, draw a card off of it and uh, exile it into the anti zone and get back the card you've entered uh, into your graveyard. It's a cool proxy card that you can use if you up into anti uh, cards that you really don't want to give up. Maybe you think you lose and you play this, and uh, so you just lose this bird instead of an important card of your deck. I'm guessing that this would be very infuriating to play for anti and just win this uh, little artifact that basically does nothing. Next up is Bronze Tablet. This card is another artifact for 6. You can uh, sacrifice it and pay 4, and uh, you choose a card your opponent has in play, and uh, you remove it and bronze the tablet, and uh, basically you exchange ownership of that card with bronze tablet. And that ownership is obviously permanent. Even after the game, the card is yours, and your opponent will walk away with an amazing bronze tablet. Unless they decide to spend 10 life, if they do bronze tablet, this discard will have no effect. <laughs> Imagine uh, playing a game commander and your opponent has something like a Jace the Mind Sculpture in play, or I don't know, a new dragon, and uh, <laughs> you pay for it, you sacrifice the bronze tablet, here you go, you don't have a commander anymore, I own it, here's the tablet, <laughs> by the way it's in exile, <laughs> so you cannot even get back this game, <laughs> that would be such a fun thing, thank god it's not legal. Another meme card from Anti is Amulet of Quads, another artifact for 6. So you cast it and it has an ability for 0 mana to sacrifice itself. And when you do, you flip a coin and target opponent needs to call to make the call while the coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, the opponent immediately loses the game, and otherwise you are the one who loses the game. You can use this ability only to your upkeep, and uh, the opponent may anti an additional card <laughs> to counter this effect. <laughs> what does it mean? So you play this, let's say in your main phase, you, then uh, it goes to your opponent, then it's your turn. You may decide to blow the amulet of cause, then everything that has happened in the game up to that point means very little, since it's just uh, gonna be a coin flip. But your opponent can decide to anti another one of his cards, so basically your opponent can prevent the game from ending to a coin flip by, <laughs> by beating another card. You don't lose anything. I mean, you lose the fact that you have a 6 mana, you have to pay 6 mana for an artifact that doesn't do anything, but your opponent needs to keep putting cards in there to prevent you from activating this, otherwise the game is just a coin flip. It's such a stupid card. <laughs> I don't understand why would you play a game of magic and then decided to, well, it's turn 6. It's time to flip a coin. <laughs> Thumbs up. Let's see who won. <sighs> you 
This card is not even funny. Vile of the Art, Dan Frazier is an insanely good Magic the Gathering artist. The last anti card I uh, want to talk about is probably the most well known one. It's Contract from Below for in black. It costs only one, it's a sorcery. And what it says is you discard your hand and draw eight cards. But the first uh, card you draw of, the, of those eight goes into your anti zone. You risk an additional card in the anti game, but you draw seven new cards and the cards you had in your hand goes into your graveyard. So it, this is basically a only for you will of fortune for one mana. It's insanely broken. Probably the most broken card in the entire game. I could still see argument for time walk, but this is too much value. One mana draw seven is insane. And the cards you had in hand before are even exiled, they're discarded. So you can still use them from your graveyard. I mean, sure, you're anting an R card, but you're definitely gonna win that game with this card. <laughs> yeah, it's one mana. You can have four of this. <laughs> it's fucking insane. But that's it for the anti cards. Let's uh, hop into the next category the dexterity cards. There aren't many of these, only a couple. So I decided to go over them because they are kind of funny. So the first one I want to talk about is Chaos Orb, probably the most well known uh, Chaos card because it's played in uh, old school. So it's an artifact, it costs two. Again, every old card that's, that has wonky effect is an artifact apparently. So you pay one mana and you flip Chaos Orb itself <laughs> into the table of <laughs> at least one foot. It must turn completely over itself at least once or it doesn't count and uh, it sacrifices with no effect. But if you launch it correctly, wherever uh, it lands, any cards uh, that it touches are destroyed, uh, as well as Chaos Orb itself. So this would be an extremely powerful card, since it's colorless, you can be slot an air deck. Potentially with this card, you will be able to get rid of problematic permanents in any color for just 3 mana at instant speed. I mean. Not entirely instant speed, you need to pay to add sorcery and then want to activate. But this can be done in uh, different terms, so yeah, it would be very, very insane if it was legal. Thank god it isn't. <laughs> I really don't want to see my opponents flipping this chaos up and touching four cards because I placed them very close one to another in the table. Oh god, this. This game doesn't have a placing rules like Yu-Gi-Oh, so I don't know what are the rules behind this card. I'm sure there are. I don't want to go over them. This video is not... I don't want to make a 20 minute video about Chaos Orb itself. The other card, uh, that's the dexterity card, is Folding Star. It's very similar to Chaos Orb, where 3 mana is a sorcery, and uh, when you flip it, it has the same restrictions. From a certain hand, it needs to flip on itself, and when it lands, it deals 3 damage to each creature that it touches. Any creatures damaged by Falling Star that, are not, that is not destroyed becomes tapped. Now, this is just a funny card. This is not like Chaos Orb, it's not even remotely as powerful, but again, since there are no rules in this game for card placement in the battlefield, this can be very. <laughs> Very swingy, let's say it like that. Again, it's extremely weak, no matter what. For 3 mana you would be able to play like Anger of the Gods, or for 1 you could play Lightning Bolt. So, yeah, this card is just a meme. The artwork is amazing though. And I think it would be funny to see it on the table once or twice. I understand leaving it banned though, because it's uh, being a dexterity card, not all people are able to use this, even though it's not very powerful. If uh, you wouldn't be able to flip this card and your opponent would uh, laugh at flipping it, I don't know, maybe it will feel bad. So yeah, I have nothing against leaving it banned. 
but that's it for the dexterity cards let's go over something more spicy the racism card so these cards are banned because apparently they are racist depictions in some way or another I am not entirely sure about well, most of them so let's see which cards are in these categories so the first one I have is Jihad so this one I can see why so he has a very realistic uh, depiction of medieval warriors from Arabia and the card itself is an enchantment it costs 3, triple white and when it enters the battle you choose a color as long as an opponent has cards of the chosen color in play or white creatures in plus 2, plus 1 and you had it sacrificed if at any time uh, there are no cards of the chosen color and opponent controls would I think when I play cast Jihad they are racist? definitely not but I could see a little bit because these are real depictions of Arabian warriors going to a version war even the functionality of the card it uh, chooses a color so you basically choose quote unquote religion that you want to fight against and as long as there are uh, members of the color every white creature gets a buff and uh, the war ends uh, as soon as they are gone so yeah this is a very flavorful way of creating a jihad even though I don't understand why it works on every player's white creature would be weird but it is jihad I can see why it's banned I will leave it there it's not particularly strong card either so I don't think anyone's gonna miss this card the next one is a bit different now this is stone throwing devils and this card well, let's read it first for one black it's a devil creature it's a 1-1 one -one, and has first strike and flavor text is sometimes those with the most sin cast the first stones well in the art you have pink demonic looking creatures throwing stone down a wall I don't understand why this would be racist I don't get it these are obviously demonic creatures, so these are inhuman. Clearly fantasy. I haven't read any any reasoning behind this, so there maybe is something that I'm missing here, but if I look at this artwork, I really don't see it. Also the functionality is just a one one first striker, so it doesn't have anything to do with any allegiances or race. Some devils throwing stones, I really I really don't get it. If someone in the comment section does, please write it down. I'm curious, but again, it's a one mana one one with first strike. I don't think anyone's gonna need this. Even in devil tribal deck, you have a better option than this, so no one's gonna miss it. This is a trend for every card in this section, by the way, or almost every card in this section. But let's go ahead to another one. So this crusade, very similar to Jihad, a bit less so, I would say since the card functionality is simpler, simples, it simply says white creature get plus one plus one, for two minus an enchantment of course. Again, religion war, this time it's for the name and the artwork, at least the original artwork, I would say, because we have a new artwork with Elspeth, and I'm sorry Elspeth, wizard says you're racist. <laughs> <laughs> we can't play with you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I understand why Crusade's banned, even though I don't really go behind it because this card functionality is not implying anything, even remotely racist. It just says white creature can plus one plus one. There are a lot of effects that cares about colors. Unlike Jihad, it doesn't really point to hate a color, but. Again, it's a religion warrior. It's mostly for the art. I would say just the art because it's very quote unquote realistic. If the only artwork was the Elspeth one, I would say that this guy would be Leo. But unfortunately, it isn't. Anyway, we have a lot of similar cards in this. We don't really need it, so no one's gonna miss it. 
Next up, and I think uh, biggest, it's Invoke Prejudice. It's a quadruple blue for an enchantment, and it says if an opponent casts a summon spell that does not match the color of one of the creatures under your control, that spell is countered unless the caster pays an additional X, where X is the casting cost of that summon spell. Now this is, this is actually exactly prejudice. So I could definitely see why this one would be considered quote-unquote racist. Still, it's a Magic the Gathering, it's a fantasy world. Honestly, if it was for me, none of the cards in uh, this category would be banned. Evoke Prejudice would be an actually very powerful card. Let's say you're in mono blue, quadruple blue in deck, uh, in a uh, mono blue deck is nothing. And uh, anything, any creature play the cost double, basically? It's insane. And Harold of McNeil is one of my favorite, like, top three Magic the Gathering artists. Unfortunately, he doesn't have many pieces, but his style is so cool. I really love it. Unfortunately, Invoke Prejudice is... I mean, this is exactly racism. <laughs> Invoke Prejudice, basically, it's a spell that... This one really does call to it, so I cannot say I can see it. It's definitely there. And so it's banned. The next one is Imprison for just one black. It's an aura. You can pay one colors and each time target creature attempts to attack, block or tap, that activation is prevented and the target creature is tapped. You destroy the aura if you cannot pay the one. No one's gonna miss this card. It's just a one mana aura that basically does nothing, kind of stops a creature from doing a couple of things. It's for some reason racist, I don't understand why. It's just an extremely disturbing and, in my opinion, ugly artwork. So we can get rid of it, no one's gonna care. Bye bye in prison. Next one is Pradesh Gypsies, I think it's pronounced, I'm not sure. For two and a green is a 1-1 one, one human nomad creature and you can pay one and a green and tap it to give target creature minus two minus one at the end of turn. Again it's a very weak creature and the reason why it's banned I think it's because gypsies is an offensive word because the artwork is definitely not racist, it's actually very beautiful, I really like the art but apparently someone decided to name these gypsies and that's an offensive term, I didn't know about it, I'm not uh, an English native speaker, maybe you've noticed. And uh, maybe it should have been called Pradesh Nomads, maybe we could still play with it if it was, unfortunately it isn't. Who knows if we'll ever see Nomads represented ever again. I really love this art, I wish they could reuse it somehow. Imagine this on a playmat, it would look so good. Unfortunately, we cannot play with this card. It's in the ban list. Damn you decided to name these gypsies. And the last card is Cleanse. Now this one, again, like stone drawing devils, I don't get it. For 4 mana is a sorcery, costs 2 and double white, and it simply says destroy all black creature. And the variable text is the clouds broke and the sun rays burst forth. Each full beast in its turn faltered and was gone. I understand why this would be racist, because in the artwork there are depicted demons, monsters, some shadowy creatures and maybe some kind of green orcs or goblins, I'm not sure I really like the artwork by the way. Phil Folio really worked very amazingly here. Look at the ba that banner, <laughs> it's insanely amazing. I really, really like the art. I don't get it. I mean, destroys all black creatures, so what? We have cards that destroy green creatures, we have cards that destroy all white creatures. For some reason, the one that destroys black creatures is racist, and the others aren't. I don't get it? I actually played a card that says destroy all white creature and the card that uh, says destroy all green creatures in my Demir zombie deck and they work pretty well and I don't need clients because 
I don't think destroying gold black creatures is relevant. It's not as good because black creatures usually aren't as important and black usually recurs them. So this card will be way worse than those. And it costs 4 mana. And you cannot play with it anyway, so whatever. But this one is really, I don't understand it. Maybe it's the, it's, the name is Clans, and those are demons. What? What should it be named? Why should this be racist? I really, really don't get it. Well, you're not gonna play with your clans as in Commander anytime soon, unfortunately. That was it for the racist cards. Now, let's go to the more interesting uh, categories. We'll start with the Antifan category. This is a very broad one, and the cards will explain themselves while we go over them. Let's see who's up first. And the first card in this category is actually my favorite card in the ban list. And it is Saharazad. So this card is uh, an amazing sorcery for double white. It's from uh, Arabian Nights, one of the most beautiful sets in Magic. I know we're never gonna go back there and I'm so sad for it because the artwork style of that set is so beautiful and look at the Sherazad art. Kaya's Folio, I love it. I love it so much. <sighs> anyway, let's get over my passion for Arabian Nights and into the card. So for double white it's a sorcery and it says players must leave game in progress as it is and use the cards left in their libraries as decks with uh, which to play a sub game of magic. When the sub game is over players shuffle those cards, return them to the libraries and resume the game in progress with any loser of sub-game halving his or her remaining life total round down. The sub-game has no ante, it doesn't matter, and you can use less than 40 cards if necessary. Now, this card is insanely funny. I don't know why you cannot play with this. I mean... Commander is not about winning, it's about having fun, and I think that playing a really weird sub-game where you have part of your deck unavailable, I mean you're playing without your commander, so probably that's not great, <laughs> because you need to only pick up cards from your library. So unless you design your deck to put your commander back in there, you're gonna play without it. But apart from that, I think that playing a deck, a game, where you're missing uh, like half of your deck <laughs> for funsies and see what happens it would be very fun once in a while. I'm sure no one would uh, be thrilled to see this played maybe multiple times in the same game or in any game. Uh, I mean, if you this card gets played every single game, you're probably vomit. <laughs> so I think uh, once in a while it will be a very fun card to bust out and uh, to have fun with. Unfortunately, you can play with it. I really wish they would make another version of this card, something like. I don't know, as it resolves, it's exiled, so you cannot record it, and it will keep your commander in the command zone. That way you would still be able to play with a functional deck, to play your mini sub game for the memes, <laughs> that has no real reason to be since uh, halving the life total of the losing players. It's not a big deal, it's basically just another game. You just Basically, it's Nick, an extra game behind that one with different rules. I think it would be so much fun. I'm so sad this card is banned. I would 100% pay the stupid cost this card comes with. This was an uncommon card. It's how much it costs. I, I put it on the screen. I don't want to read it. 
I'm so sad it's so pricey and also banned. I love Shaharazad, please wizard, bring her back. Next card is Way of the Stars. This one is not as funny. Cost 10 mana. It's a sorcery. It's blue, 8 and double blue. So each player shuffles his or her hands, the graveyards and permanents they all into their library and draw 7 cards. Then each player's life total becomes 7. It basically like Shaharazad, it makes you play a different game, but I mean you're playing with the same exact cards you were before it. So there are no different rules, you're just restarting the game, but with less life. It does have synergies with something like a Planeswalker Emblem because they stay since they are in permanents. But apart from that, I mean I guess you could use like a Teferi's Protection and Sweep of the Stars to reset everyone's board and uh, when it's your turn you phase your stuff back in so you'll still have all your stuff, all your opponents have nothing and you attack and win because everyone's at 7. So it can be relatively strong in that way, but being 10 mana, resecting the game, it's not a fun win condition. It can be played without being one if you need to. You're in a bad spot, you have 10 mana, you're about to lose, you play Way of the Stars, you restart the game, everyone's at 7. It's stupid, it's no fun. No one uh, wants this card back, so we'll leave it in the ban list. It's better for everyone. Bye bye, Sway of the Stars. No one loves you. And that brings us to the end of part one of the first video on the deep dive on Commander Ban cards. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and stay on the lookout for the next part that's coming out very soon. This was Eve. Thanks for watching.